Solving a Linear System by Substitution Method, Lesson 8.2a. The substitution method is used to solve systems of linear equations by substituting an expression that is equal to y into another equation to take the place of y. If we have a system of equations of y is equal to 2x plus 4 and y is equal to 5x minus 5, we take this part of the equation, this expression 5x minus 5, to substitute it into this equation for y. It says y is equal to this, so we're going to use this part of the equation for y. I'll show you. So here's our example. We have our two equations, and since this one says y is equal to 5x minus 5, instead of writing our equation, this one, as y equals, we're going to write it as 5x minus 5 equals 2x plus 4. We're going to use this as our y. Now we can just do inverse operations and subtract 2x from both sides. When we do 5x minus 2x, we get 3x. We drop down our minus 5. We drop down our equal sign. We have a positive 2x minus 2x. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And now we just have 4 on that side. Now, since this is a minus 5, the inverse operation would be to add 5 to each side. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate this. And we're left with 3x is equal to 4 plus 5 is 9. Now, all we have to do is divide both sides by the coefficient 3. We have the same numerator and denominator, so we have 1x, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. We know x is equal to 3. Now we know the value of x. We can substitute it into one of the equations to solve for y. We have our two equations in our system. We now know that x is equal to 3. We substitute 3 for x into either equation to solve for y. So we can substitute it into this first equation. Instead of 2x, we're going to have 2 times 3. We have y is equal to 2 times 3 plus 4, which means y is equal to 6 plus 4. It's equal to 10. We know that x is 3 and y is 10. Now, we can check the other equation. We know y is equal to 10, so we would have 10 is equal to 5 times 3 minus 5. That would be 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 minus 5 is 10. 10 is equal to 10. That's true. Now this would be something good to put in your notes. These are the steps for substitution. First thing we're going to really do is make sure both equations are in slope-intercept form. See video 8.1c in the description to learn how. That's our previous lesson. So, number one is we substitute the entire right side of one of the equations for y into the other equation. That's once it's in slope-intercept form. The second thing we do is solve for one variable. Third thing is we use the value of that variable in any original equation to solve for the remaining variable. Then the last thing we can do is check our solution by graphing the lines to see if our solution matches the ordered pair of the point of intersection of the lines. Okay, so here's our new system of equations. Do you notice it's not in slope-intercept form? So we go through what we need to do to write it in slope-intercept form, like we learned in the last lesson, and we get these two equations. And what I'm going to do is use negative 2x plus 8 as my y. So I write negative 2x plus 8 is equal to negative x plus 5. I can add x to each side of the equation. Since this is a minus x, we could do plus x on both sides. And that'll create a zero pair here and eliminate it. Now we only have 5 on that side. And on this side, if we have a negative 2x and we add x, we're going to have a negative 1x, won't we? But we don't need to write that one. We can just write negative x, and we drop down this 8. Now, because that's a plus 8, remember, we're trying to get x to one side of the equation. Now that this is a plus 8, we can subtract 8 from each side. That's going to create a 0 pair here and eliminate it. We're going to be left with a negative 1x is equal to 5 minus 8, brings us down into negative 3. 
We can divide both sides by the negative 1 coefficient, that's that invisible 1. We divide this side by negative 1, and we divide this side by negative 1. And remember your rules for division with integers and multiplication even, that if you're dividing and they have two negatives, it's going to make a positive. So we have a positive x is equal to a positive 3. We have found that x is equal to 3. We plug it into one of the equations. I plugged it into this equation. So instead of a negative x, we're going to have a negative 3 because x is 3. And we have a negative sign here. It's a negative 3. Well, negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2. We know y is equal to 2. That is our solution to the system of equations. 3 for x, 2 for y. So now we're going to do step 4 where we check our solution by graphing the lines to see where they intersect. So we have our original equations here. These were our equations written into slope-intercept form. And we can just look at these and see that the slope for this first equation is going to be a negative 2 over 1 because we can write negative 2 as a fraction if we put a 1 as the denominator. So we've got our rise over run. That's a negative slope, isn't it? And our y-intercept is going to be 8. For the second equation, we know there's an invisible 1 here. So our slope is going to be a negative 1 over 1, and our y-intercept is going to be 5. We graph them, and we have this one starting at 8 on the y-axis, our y-intercept, and it's going down 2 and over 1, down 2 over 1, because that's the slope. It's falling to the right. And for this one, we're starting at a 5 right here, and the slope is going down 1 over 1 for the rise and the run. And we end up using a straight edge to draw this red line. We see where they intersect at 3 for x, 2 for y. Our solution was 3 for x, 2 for y. So yes, our solution is true. Now when we solved the previous system, we solved it and found that x was equal to 3. We can solve the previous system for y first, but it would take more steps. It would be more difficult. We had our original equations, and we need to isolate x to one side of the equal sign. So what we can do is subtract y from both sides, and we're going to get 6x is equal to negative 3y plus 24. We can divide both sides by this coefficient 6 and get that x is equal to a negative half y plus 4. So now we're going to use this equation because now we've got x isolated to one side. And on this one, we would subtract the 2y from each side and get 2x is equal to negative 2y plus 10. Divide both sides by this coefficient 2 and get 1x is equal to a negative y, or 1y, plus 5. So that would be the second equation. Now, since this entire expression, this right side of this equation, is equal to x, we're going to use it as x. So we're going to write this equation saying that this is x. We're going to say negative 1 half y plus 4 is equal to negative 1 y plus 5 and solve. But it's already becoming difficult because we had to change it from, instead of putting it into a slope-intercept form, we had to put it so that x was first. So now we can add a 1 half y to each side. Since this is a negative 1 half y, we can add 1 half y to each side. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And on this side, if we have a negative 1 y and we add a half, we're going to be at a negative half y. We have 4 is equal to negative 1 half y plus 5. We can now subtract 5 from each side since that's a plus 5. That'll create a zero pair here. And from 4 minus 5, we'll get a negative 1. We now have negative 1 is equal to negative 1 half y. Oh, we're getting a lot of fractions here. And now we need to divide both sides by this coefficient, negative 1 half. We have negative 1 half divided by negative 1 half. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that means we have a 1y on this side, and negative 1 divided by a negative 1 half is a positive 2. We have two negatives. It's going to make a positive. 
Ah, oh, now we still need to substitute 2 for y into an equation to solve for x. It was much easier to solve for the value of x first because there were no fractions. When we found x is equal to 3 by using an expression of the equation as our y, it was much easier. Now, as you move forward in algebra, you may find that it might be easier to solve for the value of y first. Sometimes it might be easier to solve for the value of x first. It depends on the equation. In this one, we ended up with a lot of fractions. We're finished with 8.2a. We're moving on to b, using a graph to estimate the solution of a system. Many students find the substitution method to be very confusing. I hope I explained it well, and I hope you understood it. If you did, hit that like button for me because that lets me know that we're on the right track. Have a great day, and join me for Part B. Bye.